Hello students, welcome to another video on circular motion. Um, this is another practice, uh, another practice session. So we're just trying to apply the uh, the basics uh, from circular motion. So um, I hope you've had time to to go through the question, so you understand what the question is saying. And then in this video, what you just want to do is to demonstrate how to work it out. So if you haven't had time to, to just work it out, you can just take a look at the question and then try to, 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 to find what the question is asking us to find. Right. So the first step is to understand what the question is asking us to find. Once you've done that, then you can move to the next step, um, collect, uh, just try to, to come up with a, with a picture of what the question is actually trying to, is, is actually asking of you. So in this case, um, the question is saying how fast must the particle be moving in terms of R and Q. So now, what is actually happening here? So let's try to get a picture. So what we have is uh, some form of um, similar to what, what we, we saw when we we're looking at the conical pendulum, but there's a difference. Uh, we, we also have um, a rectangular um, a horizontal rotation, but now our rotation, if you, if you check, on our diagram, we just look at this. So what we have is this object is rotating in this manner. So we have we have a rotation that is more like, um, let's see, okay. So we have a rotation which is uh, in this in this manner. But then what we're given, or what we're being told is. Um, they want us to express um, uh, the force, uh, the, the velocity, how fast the, the particle must be moving in terms of an angle and the radius. Um, yeah, in terms of, of, of R and K, and this is supposed to be Q. Okay, so now, so this is the radius of rotation, and then this is um, the line uh stretch through uh the point of rotation okay now this is where the angle theta is now once you have um you have this the next part is let's say the rotation is in this direction okay the next part is uh what are the forces that are actually acting on this so this is where our point is so to actually show where our forces are we need to have some form of a free body diagram so in this case, now if our point is somewhere here, what you guys should observe um, is that uh, the center of rotation is in this direction. So this is the direction of uh, uh, let's say the center of rotation. So that's, that's where our centripetal force is. And then we have uh, the weight of this object that is going down. Now as we figure this out, the next part is, you see, this surface, um, the surface of, uh, of this object, let's say the, the cone, it exerts an upward force, more like a normal force uh, that is perpendicular to the surface. So if we uh, just sketch where that force is, so it's a force that is normal to the surface, and it's a, it's a force that is going in this direction. Mm -hmm. So this force, we're going to create an, a normal force to the surface, so if you looked at it in this uh, from this point, we're saying this force is kind of in this direction. So it is normal to, to the surface of the cone. So this is a normal force. Now this force, um, let me just extend this. Okay. So this normal force from the surface, um, if you look at it, apart from the weight, it is the only other force that is acting on this. But then it has two components. One component is in the y-axis. So I want to only work with the uh, components of this normal force. So this is Fn, um, Fn in the y. So this is in the y. And then this side, notice that this is the same force that gives us a component that goes towards the center. This was just drawn as a direction to where the, the center of rotation is. But now we're saying this same normal force, Fn, it actually has a component 
that also goes in this x direction. Now, remember what we always say, when an object is moving in, in a circular rotation, a force that goes towards the center becomes our centripetal force. So in this case, this means that uh, in the x-axis, we have a force going towards the center, that is Fnx. This becomes the one that gives us our centripetal force. So recall again that um, Fc, the centripetal force, so we've used this a lot. I hope by this time you guys know uh, what it is. So this is given by m v t squared over the radius. So once we've got this, we can substitute. So now we have um, f n of x is equal to m v t squared over the radius. Now the next part is to get an expression for f n of x. So if we go back to our diagram, what we have is something like this. So we must know what this angle is. So what is this angle? So if we come back to this triangle, what we see is, since this is 90 degrees, let me use black for that. Since this is 90 degrees, it means that when you subtract this angle from 90, you're going to get this angle here. Let me call this angle alpha. But since this, the force normal is perpendicular to this surface. When you add this and this, is supposed to get 90 degrees. So it means that this angle, whatever it is, notice that this angle as well becomes theta. So using that idea, I hope you have followed. So that uh, this angle we're looking for, this angle becomes theta. So now, since we know what this is, uh, we, can, we can say that this is the right angle triangle where this is Fy, Fny. So now, to find f and x, they are related by cos. So this is cos theta is equal to uh, the opposite, the adjacent, which is f and x, over the hypotenuse, which is f n. So from here, f and x is equals to f n cos theta. So now we can substitute this in our equation here. So it now becomes f n f n cos theta is equals to m vt squared over the radius. Now this becomes our equation one. Now the next part, we need to find our equation two. So equation two, we're going to get it in the y-axis. If we go back to our free body diagram, we notice that in the y-axis, we only have two forces. The one going down, this is the weight mg. The one going up is fny. So again, fny is this. So I hope you guys are able to see that. It's related to the angle by sine. So using the same idea I used here, so this becomes, um, it becomes F N in Y is equals to F N sine theta. So if you look at our Y axis, what we have is the sum of forces in the Y, you have F Y going up minus M G going down, this is equals to zero. So we have F Y is equals to M G but we just saw that Fn in Y was equals to Fn, and that was a sine, sine theta. So when you substitute that here, so this is Fn in Y. So when you substitute that there, what we now have, this is Fn sine theta is equals to, sorry, yeah, this is sine theta, is equals to mg. So this becomes our second equation. Now we need to work out equation one and equation two simultaneously. So I'm just going to divide equation one into equation two. So if I divide one, uh, um, not, not, not one divided by two, if I divide equation two divided by equation one, what you guys should observe is this gives us, um, so if we divide equation, equation two divided by equation one, we're going to end up with Fn sine theta on the left-hand side over Fn cos theta on the left-hand side. This, this is from equation one, this is from equation two. On the right-hand side, we're going to have Mg from equation, one, equation two, and then here we're going to have mvt squared over R from equation one. This and this cancels out, the mass and the mass cancels out. 
sine of sine theta over cos theta, this is done. So now we look at um, what, what happens next. So from the left hand side, we remained with tan theta. And then the right hand side, we had the mass had canceled from equation two. We remained with G, and then this was being divided by uh, Vt squared over, this was over, um, over R from equation one. So now what we want to find is an expression for Vt. So uh, this goes up, this becomes tan theta, is equals to RG. I hope you guys are able to see how this happened. Vt squared, we cross multiply so that this becomes Vt squared is equals to RG over tan theta. Then the last part, square root both sides, and then you have Vt is equals to the square root of RG over tan theta. So this then becomes the expression for uh, how fast this object must be moving for the condition uh, to be made as in for, for the particle to rotate horizontally on a frictionless cone. So I hope this was instructive. I hope you guys were able to follow uh, how I worked it out. So um, yeah, I hope you found it helpful if you did. Um, yeah, just drop a like and see you in the next video.